Hi, everyone. Welcome to Forbes Talks. I'm here with Michael Knorr, executive editor who, I guess, yeah, I think of you as in charge of all of our major cover stories, but kind of the 30,000-foot zeitgeist guy. And so I, I, we're talking about what's on your radar for 2023, what to watch, right? Yeah, so I mean, what, what are you thinking about? Thank you, Diane. I, I'm sort of, there are four kind of things that as we head into the new year that I think are going to be really interesting stories to keep an eye on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I'm not really here to make predictions about, say, the price of oil, although, Where you to know, invest? We're, well, there are, there are definitely some investable low, thoughts I right? have here. Um, I think the one of the most major stories that I think people thought had sort of gone away is, the, is energy. Mm -hmm. I think energy is... Uh, there are a lot of kind of factors uh, driving the price of oil. Um, it's now about 78 bucks a barrel. I mean, that's down from 116 when gas prices were outrageous. But it's kind of been kept on, you know, low by some things that are not in our control. I mean, Biden's been releasing oil from the Strategic Oil Reserve, right. which I think has done something, but Diane, I'm not sure how much it's really done. But China, the lockdowns in China, you know, kept their economy, and they're the world's biggest importer of oil. And now, um, they're hitting they're, the now they're again. now well now it's it's worse. I mean, it's, it, the COVID is running rampant in China, and um, so you have those things keeping it low. But you also can see the war in the Ukraine and. Uh, Europe has had a warm autumn, and they haven't, you know, been consuming as much gas. Mm -hmm. But and they they stockpiled right, but they're going to not be able to stockpile going forward. So you know, there's some ways. Um, I was talking to a very uh, smart friend of mine, and he said basically the only way to keep uh, oil prices low is going to be a global recession, which is not exactly the way you want to keep them low. Well, and you're talking about energy in, in the sense of oil prices, and so more volatility than we might expect, but. There are other interesting aspects, you know, when we're talking about renewables. I don't know if you'd put fusion into that category, but we've certainly had some developments that could be transformative, or do you think that it's premature? Uh, I think those things will be transformative. I think they'll be transformative when I'm a much older man. Okay, uh, so I, 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 not not, there, there are no There are no alternative... Uh, viable alternative sources that can come online quickly enough to avert, uh, I think, I, my personal prediction is a lot higher oil prices going forward. Um, and I think the other one other story, the second one to keep an eye on, uh, we just touched on for a minute, mm -hmm. is that China is having um, the beginnings of what looked like a very bad public health crisis. Uh, they managed to have a zero COVID policy for a long time at the price of enormous social disruption and yeah. economic disruption. Yeah. Um, but they're not doing that anymore. And they did not vaccinate. Um, I mean, surprisingly, for such an organized state, uh, a lot of their over 65s are not fully vaccinated. They largely used a vaccine that is not quite as effective as the one right. that we use in the West. So, and we have different strains that their vaccines are not as effective as either. So, you know, this virus spreading uncontrolled in that sort of a population could lead to very significant economic disruptions um, for the whole world. Um, well, it's, it's interesting because what's happened here in the States is that we're now viewing it not on par with flu, but certainly the variant is not seen to be as lethal. It's seen to be something people get over quickly. Is the, is the sense in China that because they've been so vulnerable and protected that it's going to wreak more havoc there than it will here, or that the variants are different? I think that, you know, I, I don't want to predict, like, mass death here because that's really yeah, not, not, not where I'm not, going. Not but I do I do think here. you have a, um, a an older, vulnerable population there, and I don't know how well-equipped China's medical system is to deal with this. Mm -hmm. um, I think they, you know, it's inevitable that they're going to have to go through this, and, um, and they are doing it now. I mean, the case numbers I've glanced at are way up, and they're still relatively low, but this is something as we go into January and so forth. Um, is, I mean, I would definitely keep an eye on it. It's a major story, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, another major story that, you know, we know a little bit about, and we think, you know, we've, everybody's been following Stan Bankman Freed, and, you know, who's the now. The gift that keeps on giving. The, yeah. <laughs> I mean. So I to mean, speak. So to speak. Taking. Yeah, the taking from some, yeah, right? Yeah. Taking from a lot of people. Uh, you know, he's now been arrested. He's fighting extradition. Um, but 
FTX is not, in my opinion, the last of the dominoes to start falling in the crypto world. I think that I don't want to predict, I don't want to name names because I don't have any inside knowledge, but I do think that the contagion in this, uh, this sector is going to continue. I think that's going to have pain on a lot of smaller investors, um, a lot of the crypto holdings. I mean, yes, you had big institutions, you had the Winklevoss, you have that sort of stuff, but a lot of people were you know, the average crypto buy was like 500 bucks. I mean, it's people speculating and some of those people needed that money and that's gonna, I don't think that it's gonna have a major effect. I don't think the crypto sector is big enough to have a major effect on the economy, but what happens to this whole area that was full of innovation and we thought full of promise, um, you know, if the only use case is really speculation, I mean, that's... So it derails blockchain as well, because that's really um, been a distinguishing factor of, um, you know, there's the, you know, the money you, that has no central bank backing, but then blockchain and decentralized, you know, ledger system, that is that is useful for supply chain. Fine. Is that also... Well, I mean, I, I don't know, and I think that we already know that it's sort of less useful than we thought it was. There's mm. some big... Um, there's some big blockchain projects that do not involve cryptocurrencies that are not speculative that were being done by big companies that were trying to, you know, share information with competitors about supply chains and so forth. Uh, Marisk, the big shipping, mm -hmm. they put a hold on their big blockchain one. The Australian Stock Exchange backed I out saw of that. theirs. That's, that's an expensive uh, failure. They, well, I mean, I don't know that blockchain specifically. I'm not uh, enough of a technical nerd mm -hmm. to know that there aren't other solutions that are more efficient. Because essentially you're talking about a distributed database. Does it have to be a blockchain? Does it have to use tokens? Does mm. it have to have this system? Uh, maybe for very specific cases, Taylor but maybe Swift not concert. as much. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's my use case for tokenization. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask one other question before we get off that, which is, do you see analogies between um, you know, FTX and say Enron, like, because that's one comparison I'm seeing, because we're talking about fraud. I mean, there's the business case around crypto. Alleged fraud. Diana. Alleged fraud. <laughs> we're talking about allegations of fraud, and of course now charges have been laid against Sam Bankman-Fried. Um, so, you know, that does that still have a, a, a negative impact across the sector because it just scares people who are already on the fence? Is that the notion? I mean, I think the Enron comparison, I mean, you could pick any major corporate fraud and draw some comparisons, of course. I think the big difference is whether it's, you know, if you want to go back WorldCom or something like that, you know, these were regulated industries in the United States. Sam bankman fried was operating internationally. Mm -hmm. um, he was, he will say he was regulated in all sorts of places, but, you know, he moved to the Bahamas because he liked their regulatory regime. Um, there weren't a lot of rules. Um, that doesn't mean he didn't commit fraud. There was, it was a, um, a bit of a wild west. And I also think that, um, yes, I think this has a massive chilling effect on um, blockchain and crypto and it might be fatal for, you know, big segments of this. Yeah, and maybe a regulatory fix like there was post Enron, WorldCom, et cetera, right? Right. I mean, and, and is, I mean, what use do some of these tokens have? I yeah. mean, that's, that's really um, the question. Uh, the last one I wanted to touch on, which is hopefully a little, I've been kind of gloomy, so yeah, I'm, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to find something a little bit more go positive. Go to bed and I'm going to wake up in 2024 at this point. <laughs> so. This one, I mean, you can take this gloomy or not, but I think AI is having, um, this is, I think, going to be looked back on um, the end of 2022 going into 2023 as uh, an inflection point. Um, we have the chat GPT, which was, as for everybody who doesn't know, which is probably almost nobody at this point, mm -hmm. is a, uh, a natural language AI. Um, that is genuinely pretty good. Uh, it comes from OpenAI. Hopefully AI. can't write cover stories, but maybe that's well, to Well, here's something that I saw was, was really interesting. Um, so, you know, you basically can ask this thing a question. It will write you a response, an essay. You can ask it to expand or whatever. Right. It's not great. But it's like, you know, an intelligent eighth grader's response. Um, and some of it, just like that intelligent eighth grader, might have been stolen from Wikipedia, uh, which may or may not be true. But somebody said something to me that it's not, don't think about ChatGPT as replacing or as a substitute for a really smart person or somebody, a journalist that could write a Forbes cover story or whatever. Mm -hmm. Think of it having infinite sort of dumb people. 
And that might, in fact, be more powerful in some ways. Um, and it all, I mean, it's going to get better. That's other, of course, the right. other side of this. Right. Um, but I think, it, you know, OpenAI, which, you know, for people who don't know, Elon Musk was involved in starting this with a guy named Sam Altman. Musk has left. Um, right. he, there was a conflict in his mind. Because there's only so Tesla. many companies that man can well, run I mean, at this point. That's the other story. Of course, everybody's going to be watching. It's just what is Elon and Musk going to do tomorrow? But I didn't want to put that there because right, you like, know everybody's already you know knows uh, that that's the most entertaining story as we go through the uh, the end of the year. But those are the four. Um, sort of macro um, trends that I see as the most interesting heading into next year? No, I think you're, I think that's interesting, especially regardless of what happens with the economy. Companies are doubling down on these sorts of, um, certainly the investments in AI and yes. perhaps continuing to run scare with crypto. Good. Yep. Lots to watch. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.